Hi everyone, this is Professor and Dust Science and today I want to discuss central potentials in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. A central potential is a potential that only depends on the distance with respect to the origin. Another way of saying this is that if you are exactly at the center of the potential, then the potential looks exactly the same in all directions. And you probably already know some, for example, the isotropic three-dimensional harmonic oscillator or the spherical box. However, the reason that central potentials are so important is not these examples that we just mentioned. It's something that at first sight might seem entirely unrelated. It turns out that when we have two particles whose interaction only depends on the distance between them, then their relative motion can be described using a single fictitious particle that moves in a central potential. The most important system of this type is the hydrogen atom. So I hope I've convinced you that we really must study central potentials, and today we will do two things. First, I want to define what a central potential is, and second, I want to show that central potentials are very much related to the angular momentum. So let's go! The most convenient way to think about a central potential is to work in terms of spherical coordinates. As a quick refresher, let's set up a coordinate system in three dimensions. Let's also consider a vector r, which in spherical coordinates we will describe with three numbers. The first number is the length of the vector r, and as a length, the coordinate r can take any value between 0 and infinity. The second number is the angle between the vector r and the third axis, and we call it the polar angle and label it with theta. Theta runs between 0 and pi. And for the third number, we first project the vector r onto the horizontal plane, and then we measure the angle with respect to the first axis, calling it the azimuthal angle, and label it with phi. And phi runs between 0 and 2 pi. Now in this language, a general potential is a potential v that depends on the position vector r, which in spherical coordinates means that it depends on the three numbers r, theta, and phi. And a central potential is a potential v, that only depends on the distance from the origin, so it only depends on the scalar r. Put another way, if we are at the origin, then the potential looks exactly the same in all directions. It is invariant under any rotation about the origin. Examples of central potentials include the isotropic three-dimensional harmonic oscillator or the spherical box. Another key family of systems that can be described using a central potential is that of two quantum particles interacting via a potential that only depends on the distance between the two particles. As we discuss in the corresponding video that is linked in the description, the interesting physics of these two particle systems only depends on the relative motion of the two particles, which amounts to describing a single fictitious particle moving in a central potential. And the most famous example of this is the hydrogen atom. Overall, all of these problems involve the motion of particles in three dimensions, so it is most convenient to work in the position representation, and this is what we will do next. The general Hamiltonian of a one-particle system has a kinetic energy term and a potential energy term. From the videos on the position representation, we know that the position operator acting on a state psi acts as a multiplicative factor on the position representation, and that the momentum operator acting on the state psi acts as a differential operator in the position representation. Using these results, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian with this kinetic energy term and this potential energy term. As we've already discussed, due to the spherical symmetry of central potentials, it is most convenient to work in terms of spherical coordinates. We already know that, by definition of a central potential, the potential energy term here only depends on the distance from the origin when we write it in spherical coordinates. For the kinetic energy term, we essentially need to write the Laplacian in spherical coordinates. This is what it looks like, which is a well-known result that you can easily consult in many mathematics resources, including Wikipedia. The expression for the Laplacian 
in spherical coordinates is admittedly rather long, but from a fundamental point of view, you can obtain it from the more common expression in Cartesian coordinates simply by following the standard mathematics of changes of variables. And I should also add that there are a few alternative but mathematically equivalent ways of writing the Laplacian in spherical coordinates, and the reason I'm using this particular one will become clear in a moment. If your preferred reference gives you an alternative form, then it should be straightforward to rewrite it into this form that we will use today. So with this expression for the Laplacian, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian as having this very long kinetic energy term, which essentially means copying the expression for the Laplacian with an extra prefactor, and then the central potential term. Okay, so we now come to one of the key insights about central potentials. Remember from the videos on orbital angular momentum that you can find linked in the description that the square orbital angular momentum operator can be written in the position representation using spherical coordinates like this. We'll have a quick recap about orbital angular momentum in a moment, and for now you can simply take this as a given. If we now compare this expression with this term here, we see that it is simply equal to minus L squared over H bar squared. This means that we can rewrite the Hamiltonian of a particle moving in a central potential as the sum of three terms. The first comes from the kinetic energy here, and depends on derivatives with respect to R. The second also comes from the kinetic energy, and it is the term proportional to the angular momentum squared here, giving this. And the third is simply our original central potential. This is a rather nice expression, because we can see that all the angular dependence of the Hamiltonian is contained in this orbital angular momentum operator. We have already solved the problem of orbital angular momentum in quantum mechanics. For example, we've already shown that the corresponding eigenfunctions are given in terms of spherical harmonics. As we will see today, this means that we've actually already solved part of the problem of a particle moving in a central potential, and all that we will have to do is to solve the radial part of the problem. This latest expression that we've obtained for the Hamiltonian of a particle moving in a central potential suggests that there is a close relation between central potentials and angular momentum, and this is what I want to explore next. To do so, let's first quickly recap what we learned about orbital angular momentum in the corresponding videos. The angular momentum operator L is really made of three operators Lx, Ly, and Lz. In the videos on orbital angular momentum, we write these operators in spherical coordinates, and we find that they all only depend on the angular variables. For example, the Lz operator in spherical coordinates is simply this. The L squared operator that we introduced a moment ago, which is equal to Lx squared plus Ly squared plus Lz squared, also only depends on the angular variables. Also remember that L squared commutes with all components of angular momentum, even though the individual angular momentum components do not commute amongst themselves. The key observation here is that orbital angular momentum operators only depend on the angular variables but do not depend on the radial variable R. This means that any angular momentum operator will commute with any term that only depends on the variable r. In particular, if we look at a Hamiltonian up here, then the first term here and the third term here only depend on r. This means that any angular momentum operator will commute with both of them. On top of this, the second term is proportional to L squared here, and as L squared commutes with itself, then this implies that the full Hamiltonian commutes with L squared. As the various components of L also commute with L squared, as shown here, 
then this also means that the full Hamiltonian commutes with every component of L. We know that any operator that commutes with a Hamiltonian is a constant of motion in quantum mechanics. So these results here show that the angular momentum is a constant of motion for particles moving in central potentials. We've just seen that the angular momentum components and the square angular momentum are all constants of motion for particles moving in central potentials. This means that we have a large number of operators that we can pick to develop the quantum theory of central potentials. However, as the orbital angular momentum operators don't commute amongst themselves, then we can limit the choice to a subset of compatible observables. As is conventionally done, the compatible observables that we'll choose are the Hamiltonian h, the square angular momentum L squared, and the z component of angular momentum. As these three operators all commute amongst themselves, we can always choose a common set of eigenstates. Mathematically, we can write the eigenvalue or equation of the Hamiltonian, the eigenvalue or equation of L squared, and the eigenvalue or equation of Lz. These three eigenfunctions, here, here, and here, are the same. You can also see that I've written the eigenvalues of L squared as L times L plus 1 times h bar squared and those of Lz as ML times H bar. We obtained these expressions for the eigenvalues of L squared and Lz in the corresponding videos that you have in the description. As a quick reminder, L can only take non-negative integer values, and for a given L, ML can only be one of these values in step sum of one. Overall, this means that the solution of a particle moving in a central potential can be rewritten as the solution of this set of three simultaneous equations for the commuting observables h, l squared, and lz. In the position representation, this means that we end up with three differential equations. Luckily, we already have the solution of these two equations from our study of angular momentum, so the problem boils down to solving the top equation. So, to understand the quantum mechanics of systems described by central potentials, we need to simultaneously solve these three differential equations. In general, these differential equations depend on three variables because they describe a particle moving in 3D space. However, we already know from the videos on orbital angular momentum that the angular momentum eigenfunctions can be separated into a radial part and an angular part. This angular part is entirely determined by the solution of the angular momentum eigenvalue equations and is given by a family of functions called spherical harmonics. Overall, this means that the angular functions are the same in any central potential, whether we have hydrogen atom or an isotropic harmonic oscillator or anything you can think of. The problem boils down to figuring out what the radial function r here looks like. In the companion video on the radial equation, we set up the differential equation that is obeyed by r. We see that this equation depends on the form of the central potential, which means that the radial functions are different for every central potential. In turn, this means that we have to calculate the radial function r separately for each central potential, and you can find a few examples in the corresponding videos. But today, we'll just leave it here. Central potentials are intimately related to angular momentum. Because we've already solved the angular momentum elsewhere, that means that we already know how the state of a quantum particle in a central potential depends on angular variables. So all we have left to do is to determine the radial dependence of the wave function. So as a next step, I would encourage you to check out the companion video on the radial equation. And after that, you can really explore any central potential that you want. But of course, the one that I recommend is the hydrogen atom. And as always, if you liked this video, please subscribe.